She gives you every side of the story. Melissa in the morning on Southern Connecticut's news and information leader, WICC 600 AM and 107.3 FM. I'm excited to have back on the show this morning, attorney Melissa Needle of Needle Cuda. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? You today. Doing fine. Thank you so much. I know last month when we were chatting, we were just starting to talk about how um, how you guys handle contested child custody cases and how that's really the most difficult thing that you guys have to do. What kind of issues could you tell us arise in these sort of matters? Yeah, that's a really good question. There are many different issues that can arise in uh, contested custody matters. And um, the, the most important of, of which is custody. And there's different types of custody. There's legal custody and who's going to get to make the major decisions that impact the children. Um, and most cases end up being joint legal custody, or sometimes you can have joint legal custody, but if there's an impasse with regard to certain issues related to the kids, such as medical decisions or e- educational decisions, one parent can have final decision-making. Um, there are occasions where sole custody uh, is ultimately uh, the, the um, situation. for, And the, in those cases, one parent gets to make the decision. But probably even more important than legal custody is physical custody. And where are the children going to live? What's the schedule of access going to be? How many nights are the kids going to spend at mom's house? And how many nights are they going to spend at dad's house? Um, There's there's a lot of different uh, factors that go into those types of decisions. And for each family, depending on the particular facts and circumstances, uh, those uh, decisions are different. Uh, One of the most challenging parts of custody is when one parent wants to relocate. Uh, oftentimes, we uh, have situations, because we're a transient society now, where one parent doesn't want to remain in Fairfield County, and that significantly impacts custody and the relationship between parent and child. And so those cases are really, really very difficult because they really are a win or lose type of situation. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, of course, every single situation is is its own. So it'd be hard to answer this question, you know, as a, as a generic answer. But, Melissa, how do you make those kinds of decisions? Well, the there there are the, the standard is what is best for the child. And, and that can be very vague. And Connecticut has a statute that lists around 16 different factors that the court should consider when uh, determining uh, custody and relocation. Um, and you, child's preference can come into play. Uh, the relationship between the parents and the child can come into play. There's a myriad of different factors and, um, you know, how that plays out through the course of the uh, divorce ultimately uh, is what the court relies on to determine what's best for the children. Mm -hmm. We're talking this morning to attorney Melissa Needle of Needle Cuda. And this was something I really wanted to dive into the last time, but we ran out of time, Melissa, very separate from what we were talking about. But I've heard of, you know, terms like narcissistic personality disorder, gaslighting, parental alienation syndrome, um, and how it really connects with divorce. I have to imagine you've seen a lot of these extreme personalities in your line of work. Oh, we see so many in this office, mm-hmm. and it really can make a uh, divorce so much more difficult. It's a difficult process to begin with, but one one spouse has something like a narcissistic personality disorder, it makes it very difficult because that's the type of person who they really like the fight. They, they enjoy digging their heels in, and it, it's an all or nothing. They need to win. Um, and the conflict is really what is driving them. Um, and it can be very difficult uh, for the other spouse Um, And they really have to have some good guidance uh, from an experienced lawyer in order to get through the process. 
when uh, your spouse has tendencies of narcissistic personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience, I would think. <laughs> Just take a, a lot, lot of- a, a lot of patience. <sighs> A lot of strategy. You really mm-hmm. need to think things through carefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's no question. Uh, I always find it very interesting to see how different sectors of work either got through or are still getting through the pandemic. Uh, you know, what is your new norm look like? How has COVID sort of impacted Connecticut divorce? Uh, Connecticut, it, it, the divorce process has had a uh, significant uh, hit from divorce. And what I mean by that is the, the, what is already a very slow process has been slowed even more. Um, so it's very difficult to uh, get in front of a judge to resolve any temporary issues. For example, if you need child support, and the other one, and your spouse is refusing to uh, pay support to you because of COVID. It's been very difficult to get in front of a judge um, to get that issue resolved, um, and that's just one example of many, many issues that arise during the pendency of a divorce. I liken it to a line at the deli counter when you walk in and you're hungry and you just want to get your sandwich and leave. That's the way a lot of uh, litigants in divorce feel. But there's a very long line. Uh, it's the system is incredibly backed up, mm-hmm. wow. um, and, wow. and we are the, the the court is trying to accommodate by doing uh, different matters remotely. The problem with that is, you know, you run into um, uh, issues along the way where there's not enough cameras, the audio isn't working, um, and it's, it's a learning curve, and we're getting there, and things now are beginning to get addressed. But there, was a, there is a terrible backlog, and it really uh, has had a significant impact on divorcing families. Um, and it's, it's been really difficult. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, like I said, patience, that's the, that's the, that's only one of the many words I could describe, uh, people like you, attorney Melissa needle and the work that you do. And I thank you so much for coming on. How can people contact you, uh, if they want uh, your services? Uh, they can call 203-557-9500, or they can go on my website at needle. Cuda, C-U-D-A dot com. Melissa Needle, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming back on. You got it, Melissa. Anything for a, a fellow Melissa. <laughs> exactly. We got to stick together. I love it. Melissa Needle right here on WICC. Coming up next, Eddie Sabatino is here. I'm looking at his face. He's in the room right next to me. He'll be on for Lisa Wexler coming up next on WICC.